The Russian equivalent of Cape Canaveral is called Star City. Until recently, it was closed to outsiders and jealously guarded its outer space secrets. But in the wake of Glosnost, a sightings investigative team was invited to Star City. And when we got there, the first cosmonaut we spoke with told us that he had just had an encounter with a UFO. Sightings went to investigate cosmonaut sightings of UFOs, sightings similar to those reported by American astronauts, but dismissed by American scientists. A lot of things we see on the picture from space are things we're used to seeing here in the control center down here in Houston. Uh, they're ordinary events that surround the spaceship, pieces coming off, uh, water dumps, pieces of ice, insulation. They're just little pieces, 10, maybe 20 feet away from the camera. But within the Soviet space program, Cosmonauts insist that they have seen more than just floating scraps of space junk. I think that we are not alone in the universe. I believe that someone or something of extraterrestrial origin has visited Earth. In April of 1979, cosmonaut Viktor Afanasyev lifted off from Star City to dock with the Soviet Soyuz 6 space station. But while en route, Something strange happened. Cosmonaut Afanasyev saw an unidentified object turn toward his craft and begin tailing it through space. It followed us during half of our orbit. We observed it on the light side, and when we entered the shadow side, it disappeared completely. It was an engineering structure made from some type of metal, approximately 40 meters long with inner holes. The object was narrow here and wider here, and inside there were openings. Some places had projections like small wings. The object stayed very close to us. We photographed it, and our photos showed it to be 23 to 28 meters away. In addition to photographing the UFO, Afanasyev continually reported back to mission control about the craft's size, its shape, and position. When the cosmonaut returned to Earth, he was debriefed, told never to reveal what he knew, and had his cameras and film confiscated. Those photos and his voice transmissions from space have never been released. It is only now, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, that Afanasyev feels he can safely tell his story. It is still classified as a UFO, because we have yet to identify the object. Spaceflight itself broadens your horizons to the point which you kind of open up to possibilities. Dr. Story Musgrave is a veteran of five American shuttle missions, who has seen and photographed several unidentified flying objects in space. Dr. Musgrave does not believe they are craft from another planet. On two of my missions, and I still don't have an answer, um, I have seen a, a snake out there, six, seven, eight feet long. It is rubbery because it has internal waves in it, and it follows you for a rather long period of time. The more you fly in space, the more you see an incredible amount of things out there, and that sort of brings to you a, really a certainty. That, uh, that other living creatures are out there. Some are incredibly primitive, more primitive than us. Some just, uh, just proteins coming together, amino acids, and some just single cell organisms. And other civilizations have been around for a million years that are doing unimaginable kinds of things. Cosmonaut Afanasyev believes that the UFO he sighted and photographed in 1979 was evidence of just this kind of distant, superintelligent civilization. Does the United States have similar evidence that they're also hiding? No, I'm sure they were divulging. That's what NASA's all about. It's about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. I can see no reason that that would be classified in any way. And I wouldn't let it be. I'm an astronaut, I fly in space. I have five flights. The second I see some, I'm gonna tell somebody. Y algo que algunos asocian con lo que acabamos de ver parecía una bola de fuego que caía desde el cielo dejando una larga estela luminosa en su trayecto, en su camino. Una imagen que despertó el asombro en la ciudad de Puerto Montt y quedó en el registro de un video aficionado. Pese a que los expertos se mostraron sorprendidos, por ahora niegan que sea algún fenómeno fuera de lo normal. La nota es de Rodrigo Quintanilla. ¿Un cohete, Juan? ¿Un cohete fugado? Sí. 
Imagen sorprendente, un misterioso objeto cae desde el cielo dejando una estela luminosa a su paso. Un cuerpo celeste perdido en nuestra atmósfera, lo cierto es que esta especie de bola de fuego despertó el temor de quienes observaban semejante espectáculo. Ya, doblando, mira. Ya. Importante. Nos vimos una luz con mi hermano en el horizonte y, y nos llamó la atención al principio, pero primero hubo un destello, después se apagó y después, un minuto después, me dijo a mi hermano, mira otra vez. Y yo le dije, ah, justo enseñando la cámara. Así que saqué la cámara y lo filmé. Cristian Infante fue quien captó estas imágenes en su profesión de marino mercante. Dice haber sido testigo de varios avistamientos de estrellas fugaces, pero algo así nunca le había tocado. En un principio pensamos que era un meterito, una cosa por el estilo, pero de pronto empezó a girar, a dar una curva y, y ahí ya no supimos qué era. El registro corresponde a la mañana del 28 de mayo en la ciudad de Puerto Montt, una semana antes de la erupción del volcán Cauye, lugar donde se le pierde el rastro. Bowyer, a man with more than 20 years flying experience under his wing, so to speak, saw something extraordinary which later made those headlines as he flew at 4,000 feet near Guernsey. And so did quite a few of his passengers, and so did the pilot of another aircraft that was flying nearby, flying over Sark. And Captain Bowyer is here now to, to tell his story. Thank you for coming in and thank you for speaking out because I know from private conversations I've had over the years with the commercial pilots, sometimes when I'm up in the cockpit with them, they do see things mm -hmm. um, and, they, and they tend not to report them because they don't want to be laughed at or have their careers jeopardized. Exactly um, right, so yeah. why have you decided to speak out about it? Well, I, I didn't actually decide uh, to speak out at all. Actually, the press <laughs> asked the company, which I work for, mm -hmm. um, to would I mind doing an interview and the company being uh, quite, quite a forward-thinking firm. Uh, had no objection. In fact, uh, pretty much actively encouraged it. So that's What? how it happened, really. Well, how did the press get hold of it then? Did, did passengers? I don't know. I really don't you, know. You weren't the only person who saw no. this phenomenon, that's right. were you? There, no. there, there were some passengers who saw it, and yeah. also another pilot. Yes, simultaneously. Well, look, let's. We've got an artist's impression that we knocked up here this afternoon on our, our computer paint box. Um, is that kind of what you saw? Is that a uh, reasonable? No. <laughs> oh, well, we, the best we did. I'll be you, honest, yeah. You, well, hold that picture. Well, you, you, you describe it. it well, it was a, a brilliant uh, yellow object. The, the brightness you've got there, about two-thirds from left to right, um, you, it was a graphite grey uh, section. If you want to call it a fuselage, we don't know yet what it was. Uh, we're looking into it. And how big was it? Uh, difficult to say once again, but I saw it from 50 miles away. So um, any object from 50 miles away must have been fairly enormous. Well, what, about a mile long? It's possible, yeah. Did it It's, move at all? It probably didn't move, but uh, there, I had uh, the great opportunity the other day from Jersey Air Traffic Control uh, visiting their radar uh, room and uh, some interesting um, traces, let's put it that way, from, from the radar. Uh, really? Indicate that there's a possibility that they did pick up on, from both Guernsey and Jersey radar uh, traces, uh, spurious traces they call, um, for around about 55 minutes. How long uh, did you see it for? I saw it in total for 12 minutes. Can I show you a picture? Um, mm. this is, I'm sure you've seen this picture. It's of lenticular clouds, um, a very rare but, but known <coughs> formation. This was yep. taken some years ago. Could it have been something like that? Could it have been some very, very strangely formed cloud? Do you think? Uh, no. Well, I think highly unlikely. Uh, I've seen lots of lenticularis in my time. Um, mm -hmm. um, but just doesn't look like a cloud. Well, really. you've seen a lot of clouds yeah. over the last few I also had days. the opportunity of looking at this, or these objects, there were two of them, mm -hmm. uh, through binoculars, uh, ten times magnification. And uh, in my view, a very definite object uh, in, in, inside controlled airspace, uh, which shouldn't have been there. What happened? Did, did you simply lose contact with it? Did it disappear? Well, I, I was landing, I was, it was a general flight from, uh, from Southampton, going mm -hmm. to Alderney, and the only reason I lost sight of it uh, was because I descended through a haze layer, which uh, mm -hmm. is fairly common yeah. in that area, and having descended through the haze layer, I couldn't, uh, couldn't see it anymore, but it's almost certainly still there. Did well, the other really pilot, who was flying over Sark, the, the island of Sark, did he mm -hmm. report it in exactly the same terms? Yes, because it was sighted, or they were sighted in, uh, in, in side controlled airspace, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the pilot's under a legal obligation, and I suspect this is where uh, the, the press has come from. And uh, he's, he's filed a report exactly the same as I have. Um, well, let's, show you, let's show you a couple of pictures from, from the UFO file books. These are, these are genuine UFOs in the sense that no one's ever been able to explain what they are, but they, they, they happen. They're not fakes. Well, that's, uh, that's over well, New I must Mexico. Say that's uh, very similar to is the it? sort of thing that I saw, yeah. Well, that and, was, and my passengers. That was famously. Uh, I haven't seen taken this over before. New Mexico right. um, in 1957, and okay. it's not a cloud. That much we do know 
I don't know what it is, but it's but not they, a cloud. Not a cloud. Uh, analysis showed that it wasn't a cloud, but they don't know what it was, uh, mm -hmm. hence UFO. This no. is one from Russia uh, in 1989. Again, analysis shows it's a genuine object. It's not a cloud. There is a cloud above it. A faint one, but uh, that object is not a cloud. Again, is that something? something? Um, well, I'd say the object I saw was, was a very brilliant uh, yellow much brighter color. Than that. Yeah, much brighter. It's emitting light. Good. It was emitting. You think it was no, emitting think, light? Well, it was, there was there was cloud above it and all the way down to Guernsey. And, so it couldn't uh, have been reflecting not, not sunlight. Reflect, yeah. Well, that was that was what I first thought before I looked at it through the binoculars. That uh, there's a lot of vineries called vine greenhouses in Guernsey, and uh, the sun may have been reflecting from one of these vineries to the aircraft. They, you often see them in France as well uh, on the way down to the to Channel Islands, mm. and uh, they because the aircraft moves position and these the reflections are fixed in place, they often disappear. They always disappear. If you this to, one didn't disappear, it just stayed stationary. If you to take an instinctive guess, and I'm saying it's guess, so I'm not asking for professionals because how could you possibly know? Would you say that it was something of this planet or something from outer space? Extremely difficult. I mean, uh, I think a few years ago you interviewed Dr. David Clark on a very similar sort of thing. He did, yeah. About four years ago, I spoke to him today. He's in, in charge of a team that's looking into this at the moment. Um, I have been asked a question by the press, and my simple answer was uh, I don't think it's from around here. Um, okay. I can't speculate any further than that. But there is some information which is now being looked at, and uh, hopefully better come back one day and give you an answer to this. But at the moment, it's, well, that, it's, a, that, it's an unknown. When, when you fly now, I mm. mean, do you have a sort of slightly heightened awareness of what may be going on <laughs> around you? Uh, I think, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's not the first object I've seen, personally. And I've spoken to a lot of other commercial pilots since this um, mm. has yeah. happened, and they've said, on the quiet, you know, come around the corner, I want to tell you about what I Absolutely, saw. Absolutely, that's... And I, I think what's going to happen yeah. now, this may have opened the can, and mm. I think uh, what all the professional pilots out there ought to be looking at is actually reporting everything they see and actually getting it yes. itemised and written into the CAA, and then perhaps we will find Well, I have to say, the unofficial first-hand accounts I've, as I say, had from professional pilots, yeah. many of them with as much experience as you have, and they're, they're not put, putting me on, you know, yeah. um, are extraordinary. Some things that, that, that some guys have seen. That's some right. see nothing in their yeah. entire career. Yeah. Um, we interviewed a British Airways pilot who also came out in the 1960s. He saw a silver disc, didn't he? He picked it up on his radar. It was picked mm -hmm. up on ground radar over the Bay of Biscay. Mm -hmm. um, pretty big. And it travelled at immense speed, yeah. way faster than the speed of sound, and disappeared under his right wing. And it was a round silver disc, you know, like they're supposed to be. Extraordinary. Well, this, exactly. this object looks like a CD disc on edge, if you like. Uh, yeah. But very sharp and extremely well defined. Well, thank you very thank much for coming in and describing it to us. That's very fascinating. Well. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.